Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between the 737 MAX and the 737 NG. If you like the video, put a like and subscribe on the channel. Thank you. Enjoy. The 737 MAX is the successor to the 737 Next Generation series and comprises three variants. The Dash 7, Dash 8, and Dash 9 are updates to the Dash 700, Dash 800, and Dash 900, respectively. Design features for the new variants include updated engines, reduced noise, modified wing features, including updated winglets, which provide a 1.5% fuel use reduction, dual tail strobe position lights, and payload and performance similar to existing aircraft with a passenger capacity of 172 seats, which is 12 more than the NG. The flight deck has a few panel changes and also includes a new flight deck display system known as the MAX Display System or MDS and a Rockwell Collins HGS 6000 head-up display system. The aircraft dimensions are little changed between the NG and MAX, with wingspan, length, and height remaining almost the same. As the Dash 8 is currently the most common variant of the MAX, the remainder of this lesson will focus on the differences between the Dash 8 MAX and the Dash 800 NG. To accommodate ground clearance requirements due to the larger engine fan diameter, the MAX nose gear height has been increased by approximately 8 inches. This has resulted in a slight body attitude change when the aircraft is on the ground. The updated winglet has resulted in a reduced ground clearance at the wingtip. Wingtip clearance is now 10 feet 2 inches. This is a reduction of approximately 2 feet 7 inches. Maximum weights for the MAX are as follows. Maximum taxi weight is 181,700 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight is 181,200 pounds. Maximum landing weight is 152,800 pounds. And maximum zero fuel weight is 145,400 pounds. The 737NG is powered by two CFM 56-7 engines. The MAX is powered by the CFM Leap 1B, which has been completely redesigned to provide lower fuel burn, lower emissions, and lower noise levels. These engines have a larger fan, with a diameter of 69 inches compared to the NG's fan diameter of 61 inches. The Leap 1B engines are easily identified by the chevrons on the exhaust cowling, which reduce engine noise. The Leap 1B has similar thrust characteristics to the CFM 56-7B. Specifically, engine thrust has slightly increased from approximately 27,000 pounds on the Dash 800 to approximately 28,000 pounds on the Dash 8. The available thrust rating selections for takeoff on the MAX's N1 limit page are 28K, with a 10% and 20% D-rate option. The option for 22K, 24K, 26K, and 27K bump are not available on the MAX. The MAX's Leap 1B engines also add an additional idle for operations, known as icing idle. Icing idle is the highest idle setting. It is selected by the EECs in flight if the engine anti-ice is selected on and both the flaps and gear are up. When in the icing idle mode, the EEC begins to transition from minimum flight idle at 30,400 feet and increases idle in the descent to provide full icing idle at 22,000 feet. Icing idle is not available above 30,400 feet.
Like the NG, engine indications are divided into primary and secondary components. Primary indications are always displayed. The secondary indications display can be toggled on or off with the engine switch. With the new MAX display system, the compacted secondary display is no longer required. Engine indication symbology is generally unchanged, but there are a few additional features. The thrust alert has been introduced, displaying an amber band in the N1 command sector. The red and amber engine limit indications are unchanged, although the limit values have been revised to accommodate the new engine. Due to higher operating temperatures, the LEAP 1B EGT numeric display is now a four-digit window. A motoring advisory has been added to the N2 display, which will be discussed later. When this is displayed, the EEC inhibits fuel flow to the engine, and the fuel control switch should not be moved to the idle position. Two new engine alerts have been added and are displayed in the alerting area. The first is a thrust alert. This compares the commanded thrust with the engine's actual thrust and will also display an amber command sector thrust arc on the N1 gauge. The second is a fuel flow alert, which is displayed when there is a disagreement between the FMC predicted fuel flow and the flow sensed by the EEC. When starting the LEAP 1B engines, the EEC will initially maintain an N2 between 18% and 24%, depending on certain conditions. This time spent motoring is called bowed rotor motoring, or BRM, and is designed to straighten the rotor shaft, which will naturally bow due to thermal buildup after the engine is shut down. BRM timing is variable, depending on several factors such as time since engine shutdown, internal engine temperature, and ambient temperature. BRM will be active for approximately 6 to 90 seconds and is only active on the ground. When BRM is active, a motoring indication will be displayed on the N2 gauge above 18%. This indication is present until BRM is no longer active. After the motoring indication blanks, N1 rotation will be seen, and N2 will begin to rise if capable. Once N1 is seen with 25% N2 or maximum motoring with a minimum of 20% N2, the engine start lever can be placed to idle. The LEAP 1B starter limitations differ from the NG. Multiple start attempts are allowed. However, each normal start attempt is limited to three minutes compared to two minutes on the NG. Starter usage on the MAX is limited to five minutes for all extended engine motorings. A minimum of five minutes is needed between the first two extended engine starts, and then 10 minutes is needed for the third and subsequent engine starts. Stabilized idle will take longer to reach on the LEAP 1B engines and will be indicated when the EGT start limit line is removed. Only after stabilized idle is obtained may the engine generators be selected on. Let's take a closer look at the new EEC features on the LEAP 1B engines. The EECs on the MAX incorporate two new automatic engine shutdown functions. The first, Electronic Overspeed, or EOS, prevents a rotor overspeed from exceeding engine structural design limits, both in flight and on the ground. If an overspeed is detected, the EEC will shut down the engine. 
The second feature is called Thrust Control Malfunction Accommodation, or TCMA logic. This is used to detect an uncontrolled high thrust event on the ground. If the engine thrust levers are reduced to idle on the ground, and an engine does not respond to the idle command, the engine will be shut down by the EEC. EOS and TCMA are both transparent to the flight crew and will present themselves as an engine failure by enunciating an engine fail alert on the EGT gauge. When the engine start switch is placed to idle, the EECs complete an EOS TCMA functional test. During this test, the fuel flow will indicate zero and the engine fuel shutoff valve will illuminate and remain bright blue. The shutoff valve light will extinguish once the test is complete. As a result of the EOS TCMA logic test and BRM, the overall start time for the Leap 1B is longer than the NG's CFM 56. Engine reverser caution lights have been added on the aft overhead engine panel. The reverser command light is illuminated when the reverse thrust lever is not in the down position in flight. The reverser air ground light is illuminated when the air ground reverser logic is failed. Each engine has an associated reverser limited caution light. The lights replace the NG's reverser light and are illuminated on the ground when a fault has occurred in the thrust reverser system or in flight when a fault in the thrust reverser system limits reverse thrust. The thrust reverser will not deploy or reverse thrust will be limited to idle. Let's look at the differences on the NG and the MAX APU control panel. The MAX APU control panel no longer contains an exhaust gas temperature gauge or the blue maintenance light. The APU door on the MAX is no longer just open or closed, as was the case on the NG. It now has three positions. Ground or full open, in flight or partially open, and closed. Because of this, the door light has now replaced the maintenance light on the control panel. This light illuminates whenever the APU door is not in the commanded position. The APU housing and exhaust have been extended and modified as shown here. The spoilers on the MAX are a fly-by-wire system which reduces weight and enhances functionality. The enhanced functionality includes Maneuver Load Alleviation, or MLA, Landing Attitude Modifier, or LAM, Emergency Descent Spoilers, or EDS, an Elevator Jam Landing Assist System, and Speed Brake Logic Changes. On the MAX, the spoilers are controlled by the Spoiler Control Electronics Unit, known as the SCE. The SCE unit translates signals from the Speed Brake Lever Position Sensor, the First Officer's Control Wheel Position Sensors, and other airplane data inputs to electrically control each flight spoiler hydraulic power control unit to achieve the desired roll and or drag. The first functionality we will discuss is the maneuver load alleviation. MLA operates at higher gross weights with the speed brakes extended and decreases structural loads by partially retracting the speed brakes as needed. The MLA is commanded through the SCE unit and will function with load factors greater than 1.3G or less than 0.3G. When MLA is active, the speed brakes will retract as required, but the speed brake lever will not move. Once MLA is no longer needed, the speed brakes will return to the commanded lever position. 
The landing attitude modifier performs two functions. First, the LAM function applies when the flaps are in the 30 or 40 position and symmetrically deploys the flight spoilers on approach to increase the pitch angle in order to maintain nose landing gear contact margins equivalent to the NG. The amount of spoiler deflection is based on approach speed. Deflection begins at approximately 10 knots above VREF, with maximum LAM deflection at 20 knots above VREF. The second LAM function deploys flight spoilers symmetrically when the flaps are in the 15 through 30 position and the thrust levers are near idle. This generates additional drag to allow the MAX to capture and maintain a glide path similar to the NG. During all LAM operations, the speed brake lever does not move. However, some buffet can occur. To increase the aircraft descent rate during a high-altitude loss of pressurization event, the MAX has an emergency descent speed brakes system, known as EDS. The EDS is armed when the airplane is above 30,000 feet and the cabin altitude warning is active. The EDS increases the descent rate by raising the flight spoilers to a higher than normal position when the crew moves the speed brake lever to the flight detent as a part of the emergency descent checklist. EDS operation is transparent to the flight crew and is deactivated when the speed brake lever is stowed or when the cabin altitude warning is no longer active. The spoilers light is a new addition to the flight control panel. When illuminated, the spoilers light indicates one or more spoiler pairs are inoperative. The speed brake do not arm speed brake armed and speed brakes extended lights have been relocated and are now above the inboard display units. In the MAX, these lights are driven by the SCE unit. The speed brakes extended light will illuminate on the MAX when the speed brake lever is beyond the armed position and either the flaps are greater than 10 or the radio altitude is less than 800 feet. This is the same as the NG. However, the speed brake's extended light will also illuminate on the max if the thrust levers are at approximately go-around thrust for 3 seconds or above idle thrust for 15 seconds. One additional speed brake logic change on the max is that if the flight crew inadvertently moves the speed brake lever beyond the flight detent, the SCE unit prevents spoiler extension beyond the in-flight position. The elevator jam landing assist is a function of the SCE unit which provides pilots with a means of increasing or decreasing descent rates during approach and landing through the use of flight spoilers in the event of a jammed pitch control. When activated, the spoilers extend to a neutral position. Sensors in the control column detect pilot inputs, and the SCE unit converts these inputs into a spoiler command. A push on the control column causes the spoilers to extend, further increasing the descent rate, and a pull on the control column causes the spoilers to retract, decreasing the descent rate. The elevator jam landing assist light will illuminate when the assist system is active. To activate the system, the elevator jam landing assist switch must be selected on, the flap position must be 1 or greater, and the autopilot must be disengaged. This system will be directed to be activated in the jammed or restricted flight controls QRH procedure. The flap gauge has been removed from the center forward panel and is now displayed on the MDS. The new display is modeled to match the key dimensions and functionality of the original mechanical instrument. 
The Leading Edge Flaps Transit and Leading Edge Flaps Extend lights are now displayed on the EDS below the gauge. The Leading Edge Flaps Transit light illuminates when a leading edge device is not in the programmed position with respect to the trailing edge flaps, two or more leading edge flaps or slats are not in their commanded position, or during alternate flap extension until the leading edge devices are fully extended and the trailing edge flaps reach flaps 15. The stab trim switch has been changed from main elect and autopilot to primary and backup. The primary and backup switches will both deactivate the main electrical and autopilot stab trim operation. The MAX Roll Command Alerting System, or RCAS, displays three conditions on the PFD to enhance the safety of the aircraft. The first is the Roll Yaw Asymmetry Alert, which is displayed when Yaw or Roll Asymmetry is acting on the aircraft and a single autopilot is approximately 75% roll saturated while continuing to maintain flight path targets. This means the autopilot is approaching the limit of its roll authority. When this condition occurs, the following are displayed on the PFD. A Roll Yaw Asymmetry Caution is displayed in amber at the top of the screen, and the Bank Pointer and Slip Skid Indicator also turn amber. Crew response to this indication should be to make appropriate inputs to fly the aircraft and follow the non-normal checklist. If the single channel becomes 100% roll saturated, the autopilot has reached its roll authority limit due to roll or yaw asymmetry, and a roll authority alert is displayed. Indications remain similar to the roll yaw asymmetry condition with an amber bank pointer and slip skid indicator. An additional aural warning sounds to alert the crew to the condition. When roll attitude exceeds 45 degrees of bank, a guidance cue is displayed on the PFD and head-up display, indicating the correct upset roll recovery direction. This cue is displayed regardless of autopilot engagement. An aural warning is also generated, specifying the direction the pilot should roll the aircraft in order to correct the upset condition. Air systems on the MAX are similar to those on the NG, with a few small differences. First, the MAX bleed system has been upgraded to a digital bleed air supply control system, which is electronically controlled and pneumatically actuated. This new system has the ability to automatically detect and isolate faults. The system also allows operation of both packs from a single bleed air source. Unlike the NG, the MAX bleed air comes from the 4th and 10th stages of the engine compressor. Operationally, the new bleed air system is unchanged between the NG and the MAX. Additionally, the RAM door full open blue lights have been removed, as there is no procedural use for these lights. The bleed light on the MAX replaces the bleed trip off light on the NG and indicates more faults than just the bleed trip off for the NG. The bleed light will still illuminate for an over temperature or over pressure, but will also illuminate for a bleed system fault or failure, or if both engine bleed air switches are off for 45 seconds after the flaps are retracted for takeoff or go around. The bleed light will include a new procedure in the QRH. Like the NG, a pack light will illuminate for a pack overheat or dual control failure. In addition, a pack light will illuminate if a flow control valve fails in the closed position or if both pack switches are in the off position 45 seconds after flap retraction on takeoff.
The Max Air system includes a new equipment smoke light on the equipment cooling panel. This light will illuminate if smoke is detected in the equipment cooling system. The equipment cooling supply and exhaust off lights are now located at the top of the panel. Anti-ice indications on the MAX are slightly changed from the NG. The MAX Leap 1B engine incorporates a new heating system for the engine core, called Core Anti-Ice. The EECs automatically control the Core Anti-Ice system by directing bleed air to the engine core based on engine parameters and atmospheric conditions. There is no flight crew input or indication during normal operation. A new engine anti-ice alert has been added to the MAX anti-ice panel calls. This alert enunciates when the core thermal anti-ice is inoperative, or the cowl thermal anti-ice system is inoperative or does not function when selected. The cowl valves lights have changed from blue to amber. The cowl anti-ice lights are unchanged from the NG. The wing anti-ice valves have changed their nomenclature to just left and right valves and have also changed from blue to amber. The left and right valve lights and engine cowl valve lights will now illuminate while the valves are in transit and will extinguish when the commanded position is reached. On the NG, if a disagreement occurs between the anti-ice valve and the switch position, the valve light remains illuminated bright blue. However, on the MAX, if the valve disagrees with the commanded position, the valve light remains illuminated and the master caution illuminates after 6 seconds. Fuel quantity is displayed on the MDS in a format that is unchanged from the NG. There are a few new informational displays which improve situational awareness. The Fuel Flow Alert is new to the MAX and is located on the inboard display unit with the engine alerts. It alerts the crew of a possible fuel leak condition when the difference between the actual engine fuel flow rate and the FMC expected fuel flow rate exceeds a predetermined threshold value for five consecutive minutes. The using reserve fuel and insufficient fuel messages that were previously only displayed in the CDU scratch pad are now also displayed in amber below the fuel quantity values. An amber fuel disagree message has also been added. This message is displayed when there is a disagreement between the FMS calculated fuel and the measured total fuel for five continuous minutes. Whenever one of these messages is displayed, the total fuel is displayed in amber adjacent to the message. On the MAX, the filter bypass lights logic considers both filter bypass lights, unlike the NG in which the filter bypass lights operate independently. If at some point a condition triggers a second filter bypass light after the first, both alerts stay illuminated until engine shutdown on the ground. The MAX aircraft uses FMC version U13 software. Functionality of U13 is almost identical to U12 and earlier versions. The primary differences between U13, U14, and previous software versions are fuel-related. At some point in the future, plans are for both newer NG and MAX aircraft to transition to U14. A new fuel feature, Fuel Progress, has been added. It is controlled and displayed on Progress page 5 of 5. This page allows the selection of totalizer or FMC calculated fuel quantities for use in the FMC fuel calculations, which may be necessary for non-normal checklists. 
In addition, the APU fuel used quantity is also available on this page, which will only display after engine start. On the Perfinit page, the crew may line select key 2 left to select the fuel quantity source. The options for the fuel source include Sense, which is the default after power up and uses the totalizer for fuel quantities. Calc, which displays calculated fuel as selected on progress page 5 of 5. And MAN, which indicates manual crew entry of the fuel for FMC performance calculations, and may be used if both the totalizer and calculated quantities are invalid or unavailable. The N1 limit page is also slightly modified with U13 in regards to thrust rating selections for takeoff. Unlike the NG, which only had 27k bump, the Leap 1B engines allow for a higher max thrust rating selection of 28k. The thrust D rates for takeoff are also presented in a percentage format with U13, which allow a 10% and 20% D rated thrust for takeoff. The landing gear geometry remains the same as the NG. To accommodate ground clearance requirements due to the larger engine fan diameter, the max nose gear height has been increased by approximately 8 inches. This has resulted in a slight body attitude change when the aircraft is on the ground. The traditional three-position landing gear lever has been replaced by a smaller two-position switch, now located in a central position on the forward panel. Similar to the NG, the landing gear indicator lights remain above the landing gear switch. To the right of the landing gear lever is the lock override switch, which releases the landing gear lever lock. The off position has been removed because the landing gear lever is now electrically controlling the hydraulic extend and retract system, as opposed to the mechanical connections on the NG. On the NG, hydraulic pressure is removed when the lever is placed in the off position. However, on the MAX, hydraulic pressure is removed from the system 10 seconds after all landing gear are up and locked. The nose wheel steer alternate normal switch retains the same function but has been moved from the left forward panel to the center forward panel adjacent to the landing gear switch. This change makes it accessible to both pilots. The auto brake switch and the brake pressure indicator have moved down to the forward aisle stand between the FMCs and below the landing gear lever. Much of the NG flight deck displays and controls functionality has been retained in the MAX, including the crew alerting system, master caution and master fire warnings, the mode control panel, the EFIS control panel, display formats, and the FMC and CDU interface. The most significant difference to the flight deck is the MAX display system, known as the MDS. This system comprises four large flat panel display units, or DUs, which replace the smaller displays of the NG. The DUs are driven by two display processing computers, DPCL and DPCR, which have superseded the NG display electronic units, or DEUs. Associated panel updates to control and monitor the MDS include revised EFIS control panels, Revised Display Brightness and Display Select switch panels. A relocated and revised engine display control panel. And removal of N1 and speed set selectors. We'll discuss the MDS panel changes first. The EFIS control panels have added a Vertical Situation Display, or VSD, button. This button toggles the Vertical Flight Path Profile display on and off on the lower third of the navigation display. 
The VSD display range is twice the range of the navigation display while in the map mode. Also on this panel, the range selector can now be rotated continuously, replacing the discrete range selections of the NG. The minimum selectable range is now 0.5 nautical miles. The range scale is no longer shown on the EFIS control panel and is displayed in the upper left portion of the ND. Minor changes have been made to the display brightness and display select switches. As there are no lower and upper DUs on the Max, the corresponding brightness control knobs have been removed. The outboard DU and inboard DU knobs now control brightness and contrast for their respective DUs. A PFD MFD switch has been added with three positions. Norm, which selects the normal configuration with the PFDs on the outer displays and the NDs on the inner. Inboard, which displays the PFD in reversion mode on the inboard display and blanks the outboard display. And Outboard, which displays the PFD in reversion mode on the outboard display and blanks the inboard display. In both the inboard and outboard modes, the engine indications are displayed adjacent to the PFD on the side where they previously appeared. The engine display control panel is now located between the CDUs on the upper pedestal. Selector switches have been added for cursor control. These switches function as follows. The switch selects on which display the cursor is located. The knob scrolls the cursor while on the info page of the inboard display unit to set N1 speed refs. Pressing the Select button selects the item under the cursor, and then the knob is rotated to change the selected setting. Once the appropriate speed ref or N1 setting has been selected, press the Select button again to move the cursor to the Set selection to confirm. The multifunction panel controls the display of engine and system information on the inner DUs. Buttons on the panel control the information displayed. Selecting the Engine button displays primary engine information on the inboard display. The System button displays a page of general system information, which includes Hydraulic system quantity as a percentage of full, hydraulic system pressure, and a hydraulic refill indication. The Information button displays selections for setting N1 and speed reference values. This page replaces the N1 set and speed reference rotary knobs of the NG. Using the cursor instead of the knobs, N1 and speed reference values can be set. The engine transfer switch alternates the display information between the left and right inboard displays. The system information can be removed from an inner DU with a second press of the associated system button. The outboard display unit normally displays the PFD and the functionality remains almost identical to that of the NG. However, there are some minor cosmetic differences. The sky ground display has been expanded, and the horizon now extends to the edge of the display, and the heading display has been expanded to a 180-degree compass rose with ground speed in the top left corner. A new auxiliary area has been added to the outboard corner of the DU. This new area displays important flight information for pilot reference, including flight number, transponder code, cell call number, and tail number. The clock information is also located in the auxiliary area and is automatically set using GPS inputs, removing the need to manually set the clock. An elapsed time is displayed in the bottom corner of the auxiliary area. This timer displays zero on initial power-up and begins counting at weight-off wheels plus 30 seconds. 
the manual stop-start controls have been removed in favor of automatic operation. There is a clock switch, now located on the glare shield, which allows independent control of a chronometer or stopwatch display in the auxiliary area. The first push shows and starts the timer function. The second push stops the timer, and the third push removes the timer. If there is a failure of the inboard DU, the MAX has automatic DU switching, which automatically changes the PFD compass rows to a mini-map and switches the engine display to the opposite inboard display unit. The mini-map contains everything the full-screen navigation display contained, including waypoint data, terrain and weather radar imagery, a heading bug, selected heading marker, selected heading, and the heading reference. The navigation display is also little changed from the NG. The optional vertical situation display is now a standard feature on the Max. Pressing the VSD switch on the EFIS control panel toggles the VSD to appear on the navigation display. Engine information is always displayed on the inboard DU and can be swapped from the left and right DUs using the engine transfer button. The Rockwell Collins HGS 6000 head-up guidance system is installed in the MAX. The existing features of the NG are supplemented by some new displays. In addition to standard display features, the HGS 6000 provides information for takeoff rotation guidance, runway remaining value, runway remaining and stopping point graphical depictions, and a reduced display format during LNAV procedures. The flight path vector has been slightly modified to a gull wing shape, replacing the traditional straight wing display from earlier versions. The available HGS modes have changed from A1, A2, A3, and NP to primary, IMC, VMC, and A3. During normal operation, the takeoff rotation guidance cue is displayed when the aircraft is on the ground, aligned with the runway, the flight director is in toga, and speed is less than 45 knots. At VR, the cue rises at the prescribed rotation rate until it reaches the toga reference line. The queue is removed at 400 feet radio altitude. The runway remaining value is displayed numerically during approach and takeoff. On approach, it appears when the aircraft is approximately 9,000 feet from the runway threshold. When the threshold is crossed, the value decrements showing the distance remaining to the end of the runway. The runway remaining graphical display appears on touchdown or during a rejected takeoff and shows the last 8,000 feet of the runway as a fixed scale. A movable pointer indicates the aircraft projected stopping point based on aircraft braking. During LNAV operations, the HSI and associated symbols are removed from the lower edge of the display and replaced with LNAV symbology. The symbology includes an LNAV deviation scale and pointer. RNP and ANP values and ranges are also displayed. Vertical representations for RNP and ANP are displayed on the right side of the display during VNAV operations. The new HGS modes, Primary, IMC, VMC, and A3, are used during the following flight operations. Primary is used for most HGS operations and phases of flight from takeoff to landing. This also includes low visibility takeoff operations, as well as non-precision and precision approaches to CAT 1 or 2 minimums. 
The IMC mode is an alternate approach mode, mainly intended for autopilot approaches. Approach symbology in the IMC mode is similar to the A3 mode. VMC is intended for visual approach operations. In the VMC mode, flight director and HGS guidance is removed. The flight path vector is displayed to control the approach to the runway. A3 is specifically designed for manual ILS approach and landing operations to CAT 2 or CAT 3 minimums.